everybody, Matt Bell with Electric Violin Shop. Today we are going to be doing a comparison between electric violins priced in that $1,000 to $1,500 price range. This is the Yamaha SV200. Really good looking violin. Um, I think Lindsey Sterling has one of these. It's a white. She also has a 250 and we'll talk about that next time. Um, she probably got several 250s because she's Lindsey Sterling. Um, but these come in red, brown, black and blue four string they only come in four string um, but these are active violins you've got your your switch here on the back to turn it on and off volume knob it's got a headphone jack so you can listen to yourself practice here it's got a body pickup right under the bridge here and um, and you've got two EQ modes and um, it uses a a separate chin rest so we do occasionally get questioned for people hey can I change out the chin rest some violins yes some violins no the answer on this one is a yes uh, you can also use your shoulder rest on here um, with the SV 130s that's not the case so um, yeah it's a good playing violin you can and if you like a different bridge than the one that it comes with uh, because of the way the body pickup is set you can get your bridge put on here you can have a luthier cut it however you want um, we do set these up when they come to our shop, so our luthier does go through these and make sure that he's got a, a curvature on them that he likes. Um, he tends to be a little pickier and a little more detail-oriented than the uh, than sort of the factories are around the world. Yamaha does a good job of putting these together, but it's just, you know, there's a difference between having a factory put one together and once a craftsman get his hands on it, um, there's a little extra value there. And we don't charge for that. That's a free setup in the shop. So. Um, Anyway, here's the uh, SV200. I'm going to play just a little bit so you can hear what it sounds like. Nice, super clear sound. It's got that, uh, it's got that active sound to it. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about, we do not recommend using this with the uh, with the Line 6 uh, G10 wireless system. It's a little bud style wireless that we really like. Unfortunately, with the Yamaha Active Violins, there's some sort of um, there's some sort of interference thing going on there, and I don't know what it is. So don't recommend the G10. This violin um, does not come with a case or a bow. It's just the violin. So again, SV200. Um, red, brown, black, and blue. Uh, has a headphone jack. It's active. Um, it's got the body pickup. No case or bow. Don't use it with a G10. Um, here's what I'm going to do for you too. Um, I'm going to play it for you unplugged. Now, I just switched it off in the back. That's the thing you want to make sure of if you have the Yamaha violins. Just sort of discipline yourself when you set it down. Shut it off or you're going to be replacing batteries every time and you're going to say a bad word or something. So. Um, here's the violin unplugged so you can hear sort of what it sounds like uh, if you want to practice in your room. Um. Okay, not real loud, not going to bother anybody in the room next to you if you're in an apartment, you're not going to bother your neighbors. Um, it's a really nice way to practice. You don't have to use headphones if you don't want to. You can if you do because it's got a jack. This is the NS Design NXTA. So uh, NS Design, fantastic violins, very very different looking. Um, Ned Steinberger sort of reimagined the violin from the ground up. This uh, doesn't look like um, your grandmother's fiddle that you dug out of the attic. Doesn't look like that at all. Um, but he's sort of from an ergonomic standpoint, from a design standpoint, basically started over. So, okay, we got to have strings and a bridge apart from that. Um, none of that other stuff is really necessary. Um, and I kind of like it, man. It's a really good looking, it's a sleek looking instrument, super sharp. Um, excellent design on these. Anyway, super pretty wood on this. I don't know if you can see the graining real well. Um, but yeah, so this is, these come in four string and five string, unlike the Yamaha SV200, it's only four. These come in four and five string models. They also make a fretted. This is what the frets look like. And we've done a lot of discussion about the different kinds of frets. You can find that on another video. I'm not going to bore you with that here. But these are the frets that are more like uh, mandolin or guitar frets. It actually frets the violin right out. Okay. 
It's uh, nearly impossible to play this out of tune unless you're bending your strings or something. Uh, they come in black and sunburst. Obviously, this is a uh, sunburst. Um, there are some cool features with this. It has the, uh, the polar pickup thing, which you can put it in, um, in one mode for pits and put it in the other mode for, um, for Arco. We do a, a much more detailed discussion of that in another video. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to throw up a link to that, but if you look on our website or you look on um, YouTube, you should be able to find a little more detailed discussion. It's when we first announced the NXT A. You guys may remember the old um, NXT violins from NS Design, and it didn't have an A at the end. The A stands for active. So this is a new thing just this year that uh, Ned Steinberger and the guys came up with. Um, one of the things that people really like about the next level up, there's three levels. There's the Wave. We saw that in the under 1,000. This is the NXT, sort of the mid-grade. And then the CR is, is the, the, the big high-dollar expensive one. That's an active violin. It's got a 9-volt battery on there for a power supply. People really like that active sound. It's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a more powerful sound. It's richer. Also, it's a lower impedance uh, output so that you can plug it into different amplifiers. You don't need an external preamp. Um, it just it changes a lot of things for you. Active violin is sort of nice to have. One of the things that sometimes people say, man, you know, make the violin active, put a 9-volt in it, they get heavier. Um, yeah, you know, a little bit. He was able to say that we want to keep this thing the same weight as it was before. So in order to avoid putting a battery in here, he put a supercapacitor. And a supercapacitor is basically just a way to store, um, to store power and then it can slowly bleed back out. So it's not going to have enough juice to power like a headphone amp, so it doesn't have an onboard headphone amp, but it does have enough to power a MySci preamp that's on board here. And then there is, through your quarter inch output jack, there is an adapter. You plug it into the wall, you plug it into the violin. For 60 seconds is all it takes to charge that supercapacitor, and then you get between 8 and 16 hours of playing time, so you know, a good day. Uh, of playing time. If you can play for 8 to 16 hours, that's a pretty good day. Um, so, charge for 60 seconds. It'll give you 8 to, 8 to 16 hours of playing time. And we got these two knobs. We got a volume knob and a, um, and a tone knob. Take that tone knob, see where it's flush with the other one? Pop it out. Now it's sticking out a little further. That puts you in active mode. Okay, so now we're playing through an, an, uh, an MySci preamp. It was already charged up earlier today. Probably not going to have to charge it for another week or something. Uh, depending on how well my life is going. If I'm playing eight hours a week, that's not a good week. Um, eight hours a day would be a good day, though. So this is the NXT-A. This is a five-string fretless, okay? So we'll play this. <laughs> Okay, that's in active mode. We'll switch to passive mode. If you, if your supercapacitor dies for some reason, say you just didn't, you weren't on top of the whole charging thing, um, you can play. Now you're just in passive mode. Uh, impedance changes quite a bit. The sound doesn't change a whole lot. You, you'll probably hear a little bit of something here. I can definitely hear the difference here. I don't know how uh, how strongly that's coming through the microphone. There, there's definitely a difference. You're uh, you're getting a benefit from having that my side preamp on there, but I wouldn't say it's like a night and day difference. If the, if the supercapacitor dies and you have to go to um, passive mode, you know, at the end of the world, you, you're still got a workable violin. So um, yeah, really like these, the NXT violin. Uh, it is uh, a considerable uh, improvement over the Wave violin. The Wave is, is the budget model. This one is uh, sort of the mid-grade. It's definitely a step up. Um, and uh, in my mind, if you've got the money to, to move up to this one, it's definitely worth doing it. Uh, if you don't, the Wave is still a, a really nice instrument. So, NXT-A, active violin. All right. Uh, the next one is an Aurora violin. These are Brazilian-made um, acrylic violins with uh, LED lights. 
pretty cool looking instruments. Um, really smooth looking. Uh, you can turn LED lights on and change the colors. I guess you guys can see that. Certainly not going to uh, light up the night or anything, but it's enough light to uh, sort of give it a, a, a bit of a different look. Really warm, rich sounding instruments. We like them a lot. Um, usually have a pretty low setup on them. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty quick. Pretty quick instruments to play. Uh, do come with a case. Do not come with a belt. These are available in white or black. You can see this is a black one. Uh, we also have white ones available. You can use the G10 wireless with this. We don't have any issues with that at all. You cannot use it with the NXT A. It has to do with the uh, the switch for the uh, for the the uh, preamp that sort of touches in a, in a bad spot. Um, so here is the Aurora. <laughs> Pretty nice sound of these. They're uh, they're warm. The next instrument here is uh, the bridge violin. I really like these for a lot of reasons. Um, this is the bridge. This one is called the Lyra. It's a five string. Uh, the bridge Aquila is a four string. Um, I have a terrible memory, so the way I keep track of that is uh, they're in alphabetical order. A for Aquila is four. Uh, L for Lyra is five. Um, maybe that helps you, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Um, but this is the bridge uh, Lyra. This one is a red marble. I guess you guys can maybe see that. Super pretty, the way they paint these. They come in a bunch of different colors. I don't know if you, there's a, a like a green blue over here. Um, they got several different marbles. There might even be a silver or something on the way. We've seen silver ones. We've got a white one. Uh, there's like some purple black, some green black. They, they really do some super cool colors with these. This is a hollow body that is made with carbon fiber and Kevlar. Uh, these things are uh, pretty tough. I know they did hit one with a uh, sledgehammer. If you want to do that, that's great. Um, but, I, I, you know, it's your violin. You do what you want. I'm, I'm not going to hit mine with a sledgehammer. I trust them. I believe them when they say so. The cool thing about these, you know, a lot of people... One of the complaints we get sometimes from people on on electric violin is they just sound they don't sound too organic. You know, it, it definitely has sort of that piezo pickup sound to it. It doesn't resonate much. This has a resonant body that you can hear, but it doesn't have any f holes, so it's not going to feed back for you. Um, but but at least under the ear, it sort of sounds a little bit more like your like your violin at home. Um, Nice sound of violin. There's not any reverb on that at all. Uh, and the EQ is perfectly flat, so that's just that's what the violin just sounds like. Okay, and then I will uh, turn the uh, volume off on that. It's got a tone knob on it, so you can sweep and sort of brighten that up or darken it up a little bit. It's not it's not a super dramatic difference, but it's it's noticeable. This is uh, this one does sound a little bit different um, than some of the uh, more solid body instruments when it's unplugged a little bit louder. So I'm gonna let you hear it. Okay, so a little bit more sound, but certainly quite enough to practice in your room. Not a big, you're probably not going to disturb the neighbors with it, but it does sort of have a little more of a body resonant sound. So if that's something that you uh, that you like, um, this is a good choice for you. You cannot use the G10 with this again because it's an active violin. It does have a uh, three volt coin cell battery in there. It gives you about a thousand hours of playing time, which is a pretty good month, right? Hopefully, uh, no headphone jack does come with a case, does come with a bow. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say, you know, it's not exactly a, a, a coat of bow jewel that it comes with, but it's, it's a functioning bow. You know, it's one that if, if you've got that and you show up at the gig and it's the only bow you got, you can get through the night. 
not not a bad deal okay so that's the deal bridge aquila and lyra uh, the next one is the only midi violin in this price range and it is a uh, cantini san plus these are made in italy um, really cool violins i like these a lot i don't know uh, if you guys have seen the the midi jack on a violin that's what we got there so there's a quarter inch output there's also a midi output these are compatible with the new generation <clears throat> sorry with the uh, the current generation roland floor control synthesizer it's the roland gr55 uh, these will drive that as well as a fornis violin or a zeta violin will uh, and those violins are, uh, you know, two, three, four times the price of this one. It is, uh, it's, it's equally good in my mind uh, for driving MIDI as those. Um, it is an excellent violin for the price. Um, it's also an active violin. They are, uh, they're a little bit heavier because it does have all that MIDI electronics in it. It's also, you see here, it's got a uh, little door for the, uh, the nine volt battery. Um, I do see a lot of people play these basically just as regular electric violins. They compete very well in this price range um, to be used just as an electric violin. Um, but then you've also got the added ability to, to, do, uh, to do MIDI. Okay? Nice sound of violin. Um, they do sort of. There's a uh, there is a little bit of a resonant a resonant chamber in here. It's not quite. It's not nearly as resonant as the bridge, um, but uh, the bridge doesn't have MIDI. So you know there's sort of pluses and minuses uh, to either one. These come in a bunch of different colors too. This is considered a green black. It's got the green that fades to black around the edge. Um, <clears throat> they do a red black. They do a blue black. That's a really good looking violin. They do a solid white. That, you know, we'll see some different colors out of them, but those are sort of the ones that we usually see, okay? Um, you can use this with the G10, even though it's an active violin. It's the only active violin that I can think of off the top of my head that you can use the G10 wireless with. This last violin I'm going to talk to you about is a Mark Wood violin. Um, our friend Mark Wood is the big uh, electric violin rock star guy that you guys all know. Um, this is, we talked last week about the Stingray SVX, which is sort of the entry level model uh, to the Mark Wood line. This is one that's a step up. It's the same shape as the Stingray, um, but the Stingray Pros, you see these in white and you see them in black cherry. They don't, they don't offer those colors in the other Stingray. It's just black and red. If you see one that's white or it's black cherry, uh, it's the Stingray Pro. Um, sometimes you see them, they got some sort of little design on the fingerboard. You'll see some of those. Um, these come in four string and five string and there are some really nice upgrades on this violin from the Stingray SVX. My favorite upgrade, it's got the, uh, it's got the Whitner pegs on it, which are the geared pegs, which means that it's, uh, you know, it's super, super easy to tune. Um, it does have a nicer tailpiece on it. It's got better strings on it, which sort of saves you the trouble of, uh, of changing the strings out on there. Comes with a nicer case. You know, it's just some, you know, some, uh, some nice uh, things that come along with this, okay? So it makes it a little nicer than the, uh, than the Stingray, but in, uh, it's, it's still got that really distinctive Stingray sound that I like. I didn't tell that C string to do that. It did it all by itself. Um, so here is the Mark Wood Stingray Pro. So um, I'll actually unplug this one and you guys can hear what it sounds like unplugged. I didn't do that with all of them because a lot of them, um, sort of the difference, the, uh, they all sound fairly similar unplugged except the bridge. Um, there's just, it's really just hearing some strings is all.
okay? Not a lot of sound coming out of this. Great for practicing in your room. Um, I don't even use headphones when I practice. Usually I just unplug the thing and play. Um, if you want to use headphones, you can uh, you can plug into a headphone amp or multi-effects or whatever you want to do. Um, so, yeah, so we'll run back through these real quickly again. You can use the G10 with this. It's a passive instrument, which makes it super simple. You're not jacked around with batteries. You're not messing around with with charging stuff or whatever. If you if you just need dead simple, I'm going to plug it in and play it. Um, the, the passive instruments are nice for that. So um, this is a Stingray Pro, $12.99 for four, $14.99 for five. Comes with a case, and uh, I don't remember, Chris, one of these, come, do these come with a bow? Maybe, maybe. If it is, it's nothing uh, to write home about, but it's better than nothing. So that's the Stingray Pro. To go back through again, this is the Cantini, this is the MIDI violin. A um, bunch of different colors. It's active, has a 9-volt battery in it, and uh, made in Italy. Cool violin. This is the, the bridge. These come in 4 and 5. It's got the uh, carbon fiber Kevlar composite body that's hollow. Active violin, and um, yeah, really nice violin. These feel fantastic. I love the necks on these things. Uh, really nice violin. We've got the, the Aurora. This is one model of the Aurora. There's actually another one that's pretty similar. Um, in construction, the shape is a little different. I don't know if you guys can see. It's sort of hard to see the shape of this, right? But it's more or less the cutout of a violin. It's called the Silhouette for obvious reasons. Uh, also has um, lights on board. Cool, right? Uh, those are available in 4 and 5. And then there's the NS Design NXTA which is available in four string, five string, fretted and fretless. And then the last one is the Yamaha SV200. Again, it's a long time ago when we talked about this very, very famous iconic shape. Uh, there's, I've actually seen some really cool stuff people do with these. They put the uh, LED strip lights on them. There's millions of these things around the world. Tons of cool colors, uh, red, brown, black, blue, for a little bit extra money, there's a white. It's got a headphone jack in it, so if you like practicing at home, you don't want to be messing with external stuff, just plug your headphones in, you can practice. Uh, doesn't come with a case or a bow, but, you know, at that price, it's a pretty nice violin for that price. You can afford to throw in, you know, another 70 bucks or something for an inexpensive case. So, that's the deal on electric violins from the $1,000 to $1,500 price range. Thank you guys for tuning in. Any questions you have, shoot us in the comments section here. We'll try to get to those. Info at electricviolinshop.com. You can email us. You can call us here at the shop. The website, there's, there's tons of ways to contact us. Uh, we're happy to answer all your questions. We'll do what we can to help you out. Um, customer service is a thing. We're a small shop. There's not that many of us working here. We're not like some big conglomerate that doesn't care whether you buy your violin here or not. We do. We want you to buy your violin here because we feel like we offer better service than anybody else. Uh, you get a free setup. You get a... Yeah, get some cool stickers and all that stuff when you buy here. So, uh, and then you're supporting a small business rather than a, like a Walmart type thing. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in, uh, and we'll see you next week.